This is Economy Watch. What you need to know about New Zealand's economic life today. Brought to you by interest.co.nz. Kia ora and welcome to Monday's Economy Watch where we follow the economic events and trends that affect New Zealand. I'm David Chaston and this is the international edition from interest.co.nz and today we leave with news that jobs will be in focus this week. In the week ahead, all eyes will be on the US Fed's interest rate decision on Wednesday, followed closely by their April labour market report on Saturday, New Zealand time. And that comes after our own local labour market report for March on Wednesday. The US ISM PMI will come out this week, recalling the internationally benchmark one has already showed a slowdown. And similar PMIs will come for China, Canada, South Korea, among others. The US jolts job openings data, foreign trade figures, factory orders and the Conference Board Consumer Confidence Index are also due this week. And any one could be market moving if it steps out of range. And the US first quarter earnings reporting season reaches its peak this week. Finally, we'll get inflation updated for the EU, South Korea, Switzerland, Indonesia and Turkey. But first, the weekend data release showed profits earned by China's industrial firms rose by 4.3% in the first three months of 2024, much slower than the 10.2% jump in the prior period. But they actually fell in the month of March from the same month a year ago, down 3.5%, suggesting their economy is stronger than expected growth earlier this year may be tough to maintain. The latest result underlined the government has struggled to get a recovery momentum amid a prolonged property downturn, persistently weak domestic demand and lingering deflation risks. Profits in state-owned companies fell, while those in the private sector sharply slowed on the three-month basis they like to use. But it is masking building near-term weaknesses. The recent volatility in the yuan, depressed profits and the unexpected shift in external demand are combining to make some Chinese exporters less sure about their business prospects and more likely to park their cash assets in anything but the yuan. The yuan's value has recovered somewhat since October, but exports haven't, and business holders of the yuan are sensing a potential official depreciation is imminent. And markets are also sensing a new official rate cut is imminent in China, and the Chinese government 10-year bond yields dropped sharply on Friday, before recovering just as sharply as officials stepped in. And staying in China, there are reports that property market sentiment is improving, and that has property-based equities rising sharply in the Hong Kong Stock Exchange on Friday, but oddly not yet on the Shanghai Exchange, one to watch. And in a new stimulatory action, China is offering trade-in subsidies for new cars. Internal combustion engine car owners can get a 10,000 yuan subsidy to buy a new electric vehicle, or they can get a 7,000 yuan subsidy for a new ICE car with engines of 2 litres and smaller. The world's largest car market is about to get larger and have its profitability problems solved. But this is bringing louder international calls for action to push back on Chinese overcapacity. The issue worries the EU and Japan a lot. And the Bank of Japan kept its policy unchanged on Friday as expectations mount for the central bank to deter further selling in the embattled yen. From the no-change position, the yen has continued to fall, primarily against the US dollar, but even against the New Zealand dollar. At Friday's 93.8 yen to the New Zealand dollar, that's as low as since May 1986, 38 years ago. Against the US dollar, the yen has sunk to 158, its lowest since March 1986. Markets are betting that Tokyo is going to have to intervene very soon. While Japanese exports are suddenly much more competitive, a depreciation like this, that's 15% in the past year, could bring an inflationary shock with it. Across the Pacific, the American PCE inflation index came in at 2.7% for the year to March, back to levels they last had in November. It has now risen, modest as it might seem to us, for the past three months. Their core rate has held at 2.8%. The financial market takeaway is that American inflation is still uncomfortably sticky and that the Federal Reserve is right to be cautious about signalling a cut to its benchmark policy rates. The same data shows American consumers spending normally, with personal consumption spending 2.7% higher than a year ago, while disposable incomes were up only 1.4% though. The US Treasury 10-year yield is now at 4.66% and down one basis point from Saturday, 
And the price of gold will start today a little softer, down $3 at $2,337 an ounce. Oil prices a little Jane from Saturday and just on 83.50 a barrel in the US, while international Brent price is still just on 88 dollars a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar starts today marginally softer at just under 59.4 US cents. But for the last week it rose a half a cent. Against the Aussie, we're softer at 90.9 Australian cents. Against the Euro, we're unchanged at 55.6 Euro cents. That all means our trade weight index starts today at just under 69.2, and a little change from Saturday, but up 40 basis points for the week. And the Bitcoin price starts today at 63,733 US dollars, and down half a percent from this time Saturday. Volatility over the past 24 hours has remained modest at just on plus or minus 1.2 percent. And you can find links to the articles mentioned today in our show notes, and you can get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston, and we'll do this again tomorrow.